Okay, so now we've got the squash stretch set up on the left and right hand side. A uh, couple of things we want to check out is as we move this arm and it stretches, we get a problem where we can see that the arm or the hand is being affected by the stretch of its last joint. And we're going to show how we can fix that. But before we do, what we need to do if we just select these two lockets here is clean up as we go along so we could do this as we're doing it or do them all at once and it's always good not to leave it too long so we just want to start renaming this graph that we set up so I'm going to select those two distance dimension tools and just graph both networks so these are the two squash and stretch networks that we've made. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to remove the joints, graph, remove selected from graph. So we've already renamed the joints. I'm just going to start with so I'm going to start with the left hand side and we're going to go through and just rename these. So distance, dimension, shape. So I'm actually going to select the distance dimension in the viewport so we're not editing the shape because the name will automatically update for the shape so distance dimension I'm just going to short for dd underscore left underscore arm stretch underscore 01 so we, we now know what that is I'm going to copy the name um, select the first locator paste the name and just put LOC for locator and stretch A. This is the first first locator. Copy and paste get onto the second locator. It's gonna be locator B. And we could do the left hand side as well. I mean the right hand side, sorry. At the same time. Just making sure we name everything as we go along. So I'm going to get distance, dimension, shape, paste this on. It might seem a bit tedious going through and renaming everything but it'll be a lot easier later on if you try to debug this rig or try improve this rig or try edit this rig and also if things have the same names so set these locators, if these were parented in different groups so they're in different hierarchies they can have the same name so they could be called locator1 and another one could be called locator1 but then if we try applying email scripts or try rename these or try do connections we're going to get problems because Maya gets confused when two things have the same name so making sure that all got individual unique names is going to help us quite a lot so working with the left side multiply divide node so md underscore left underscore um, I'm going to call this stretch value so this is giving the actual this is the node multiply divide node that gives us the actual stretch value and that's the left arm sorry copy the name paste it to the other side Renew it right, and then condition nodes so con underscore left underscore arm stretch condition. Copy the name again, paste it over. And then the last blend color node, BC underscore L underscore arm underscore stretch switch. Because this is the switch that switches it on or off, uh, zero, 01. And copy and paste that across. And one last thing we need to do is, I'm going to copy the stretch multiply divide node. I'm just going to graph these two multiply divide nodes again. 
because again we had this global scale attribute. So making sure I'm on the left, multiply divide node, I could paste the name in md underscore l um, stretch um, global. So this is dealing with the global stretch when we scale the global control up. Copy the name, paste it on the other side, let's rename that right. Okay, so now we've got these two graphs which we know exactly what each one of them does. And we could, if we wanted, um, one last thing we could do is just rename these point constraints. So actually I've noticed an error done here as well is we've renamed the shape in the outliner. So I just want to take those names and put them on the actual locators, not the shape. See, he, see here underneath, I'm taking the shape and just pasting it into the name. Okay, so the next thing we're going to fix is the arm on either side where it starts to rotate and not follow along with the wrist. So if I stretch this far out, you can see it's still rotating with the wrist. The wrist control has an orient constraint with that arm, but we're getting this undesirable rotation, this skewing of the arm as it's been scaled. And we can check this when it's been scaled because if we set this stretch back to 1 the wrist rotates as normal. It's not skewing as we move left and right. It's staying parallel with this wrist control which is what we'd expect when it's stretched. But it doesn't. So what we can do here is we're just going to split the hand from the arm. and. I prefer to do this when there's some sort of stretching going on, so with stretchy spines, stretchy arms or any sort of stretchy limbs, I like to separate the stretchy uh, part of the rig on its own, so any stretch that happens throughout those joints doesn't carry on in any other part of the rig. And to do that, what we can do, so I'm going to select this wrist and hit shift P to unparent. I'm going to create a joint on the grid, so grid snap it at X and I'm going to vert snap it up here on the wrist and with it selected I'm going to select the forearm and hit P so essentially what I've done is I've unparented the wrist and created another joint in the wrist's place to carry on the rest of this arm and I'm going to rename that, I'm just going to take the GNBNT and like with the joints we've done here, GA, JT end for the end joints I'm going to do the same in, with this because it's the end of the joint chain and we don't want it for skinning. So J T E N D and just make the name conventions consistent. We had E, so upper uppercase E and then lowercase N D. So just keeping the name conventions consistent. Left wrist end. So now we've got the wrist set up, but you can see the stretching's not affecting the rotation of that wrist, but it's not falling along anymore. So what we need to do is, instead of parenting this, because again, parenting it will put this as a child of that object, and it means it's subject to its rotations, translates, scales, everything. Now what we can actually do is just select this new joint, shift select the wrist, go to constraint, point, and we'll make sure maintain offset's on. So now essentially we're moving the wrist with the arm, we're rotating the wrist to the wrist control, so none of that extra information, that extra scale is is coming across to the arm, only the translate of the end joint is. 
so that way we've separated this hand completely from this stretch network so none of this stretch can ever affect this hand and I'll quickly do the same to the other side so I'll select the wrist, shift P create a joint and for this I'm not setting up the local rotative axes for this joint because I can edit it later on but it's never going to be used for rotation it's only used to get the position, the translate of the wrist we're never using its rotate so it doesn't matter too much about its rotate I'll just parent it up take the name paste the name and we'll just rename this end E N D D and then I'm just gonna take that joint select the wrist joint constraint point make sure I maintain offsets on and close and that way we have both arms if we stretch switch stretch on both of them we can see the arms are skewing anymore we can rotate them normally everything's working fine reset that back to zero and final clean up we'll just come in here because we unparented the wrists we need to reparent them to their joints group the BN group and the same with all these distance damage tools because we don't need to see them they're just there to evaluate the length of the arm we can just add them to extra extra to hide so they're essential for working out the stretch of the rig so we can't delete them we still need them to be working but we just don't need to look at them anymore so we can just hide them in that extra group okay so now we've got the arms working in FK working in IK working with the IK FK switch and with the stretch on so we're going to move on to the rest of the rig now and probably in a bonus tutorial we'll do a bit more how to do the FK scaling so you could have the FK scale rig it's not really I haven't seen people use it a lot because it's, it's more for IK you want the arm to be fully locked for that stretch so having stretching FK you might have stretchy arms that can still bend and it doesn't look like it's been stretched that way but we're going to add that in later on in a bonus tutorial so the next from here on what we can do is starting with the spine of the rig and continuing the, with the rest of this character